He's from Istanbul University and he's going to talk about the role of secondary stress in the teaching of English rhythm. Nothing big. The floor is yours and you have got 15 minutes anyway. Thank you. The role of the secondary stress in the teaching of English rhythm. The secondary stress, as we sometimes call it, the secondary accent is the weaker of the true degrees of stress in the pronunciation of a single word, a compound word or a phrase forming a thought group. The stronger degree of stress or prominence is called primary and uh, that of a weaker degree is referred to as secondary. The International Phonetic Alphabet, IPA symbol for secondary stress is a short vertical um, a line preceding at the foot of the stress syllable, or an instance, uh, uh, the syllable, for instance, in the word uh, pronunciation, in the word pronunciation, we have the syllable none, which has the, uh, uh, the secondary stress, and uh, another tr uh, tradition in English is shoulder stress is to assign the acute and grave accent of primary and secondary stress in pronunciation, as you can see on the screen. The stronger degree of stress uh, of prominence is called a primary, and then of a weaker degree is referred to as secondary. Most languages, if uh, they have stress at, uh, at all, uh, have only one degree of it on the phonemic level. However, in English, having such a supersegmental structure as the secondary stress, having a secondary stress is a great asset. The distinction and stress between the compound words and phrases point out the meaning intended to convey me more clearly as the modified element versus the item that modifies it. For instance, in the uh, compound, tax relief, the word tax has higher prominence than the relief with the formal word having the primary stress, uh, reducing the uh, letter, the secondary, and making the meaning of uh, the word clearer where the stress is placed. Explaining it a little further uh, with another example, again, in the compound English teacher, the word English has prominence over uh, uh, teacher, thus meaning that the teacher actually uh, does the teaching of English, but he himself is not necessarily of English origin. However, if the first word English falls into the secondary prominence over the second item as the English teacher, then we can safely assume that the teacher that does the teaching himself is English. So the uh, meaning of uh, phrases or compounds uh, can be better uh, understood by where their uh, primary, primary and secondary stress fall. Uh, a blackboard, uh, the blackboard eraser, um, um, which is a board eraser that is black, versus a, a, a blackboard, blackboard eraser, an eraser for a blackboard. Also, the uh, sentence in the sentence, my uh, bike has been stolen, versus my bike has been stolen. Uh, the word bike and stolen have correlation in meaning between the, the two, and either one may have primary or secondary stress according to the prominence of their meaning. Thus, the uh, secondary stress plays a very important role in distinguishing the shades of meaning or the intensity of the utterance of the whole sentence. Let us now continue with other examples or uh, for instance, a question statement such as, uh, is this my birthday present? Uh, having the primary stress on the word this uh, and the secondary on the birthday. Uh, uh, that does express a surprise on the nature of the gift. On an alternative mode, the newly formed intonation pattern, is this my birthday present? Um, the, the rising prominence on birthday reduces the stress to secondary position on this, arousing curiosity on whether the parcel actually uh, contains a birthday present or perhaps something else. As for the uh, lexical formation of uh, secondary stresses, much could be said about the recognition of their location. If we study 
such multi-syllable words with their bases, such as uh, explain versus explanation, or uh, consider versus consideration, or uh, uh, associate versus association, character, finally character uh, versus characterization. And we immediately recognize that the derivatives show a change in the position of primary stress, leaving their earlier prominence to the reduced forms as the secondary stress. The role of uh, secondary stress becomes more obvious in full sentences where meaningful thought groups are separated uh, from one another by sustained juncture. In such thought uh, chunks, uh, those elements uh, having uh, greater prominence in meaning assume primary stress in pronunciation, whereas those, uh, um, whereas those with less prominence do fall into a, a secondary position. To exemplify this statement, here are some uh, English proverbs being divided into uh, such thought groups separated by juncture signs, showing clearly individual instances of primary and secondary stresses. The best things in life are free, or uh, uh, a stitch in time saves nine letters, or uh, still waters run deep, uh, he teaches ill, who teaches all, or uh, you can't take it with you uh, when you die, when you die, or uh, better untaught than ill-taught, or uh, don't cross your bridges before you come to them. So there are many ways of showing primary stress and secondary stress uh, correlation. Even a worm will talk, turn, or it was the last straw that broke the camel's back, or where there is a will, there is always a way. And uh, marry, if you marry in haste, then surely you will repent at least your, at your leisure. Um, or another one, the way to a man's heart is through his stomach. Um, another one, soon learned, soon forgotten. Um, Yet another one, if you, if you wish good advice, then uh, consult an old man like me. Go ahead. Uh, no news is good news. Um, birds of a feather flock together. Or tell me who you go with and I tell you who you are. The location, how can you find the location of a secondary stress? That's the a, that's a question uh, students usually ask. What makes the acquiring of the correct pronunciation of uh, the English word, uh, what makes it extremely difficult for foreign students is that English has several degrees of word stress. All words in English have a primary stress whose placement is totally unpredictable. In addition, long words in particular have a secondary stress. Phonologists also distinguish a tertiary stress, but for the purpose of this short presentation, I will restrict the contrast only in these two types of stress. For instance, all the vowels of a six-syllable word, except the one with primary stress, may be considered as unstressed syllables, whose vowels are reduced to schwa, like impartiality. However, we notice that the vowel in the uh, uh, second syllable, far from being reduced to schwa, is a long tense vowel, like impartial, impar, impartiality. The fact that the vowel has managed to present, preserve its value, uh, though uh, a primary stress does not fall on that syllable, is explained by the fact that the second syllable of the word uh, bears a clear secondary stress. And we duly uh, mark this syllable by a lowercase stress, a foot stress sign, to show its secondary uh, prominence. In some cases, Secondary stress falls in those syllables where the prominence previously falls, but the main stress uh, moves.
towards the end of the word. Here are some examples. Library and librarian. Secretary versus secretarial. Uh, and some with no previous rules. Dormitory, uh, testimony, matrimony, ceremony, uh, photograph, uh, photographic. Compound stress, the distinction between a compound stress and the phrasal stress. The compound stress pattern is a reliable indicator of compound status, since this stress pattern would never be possible in a syntactic phrase. The compound stress is the stress falling on the initial part of the thought group. Cowboy, school bus, Christmas present, ballet lesson, elevator operator, peanut butter, jar label, blockhead, blackberry, yellow jacket, watchdog, crybaby, cover letter, scarecrow, carsick, sunbathe, water ski, freeload, deep fry, stir up, stir fry, tie dye, red cheek, pig headed, level headed, home grow, overrated. In the phrasal, the latter words have uh, the primary stress, and we refer to it as the rightmost stress. And for the uh, former uh, words, calling their stress prominence uh, to uh, the secondary position. So here the stress occurs in phrasal toward the end of the statement as they opposed to the initial stressing in compounds. Let us take some examples uh, of uh, the position of the primary use, primary stresses. In the brother of Mary versus uh, Mary's brother, uh, and he was teaching linguistics versus he was teaching in Ghana. Most expressions that uh, linguists would uh, classify as compound, take compound stress. In other words, uh, compound patterns. The secondary stress compared to primary is weaker in prominence. Jensen defies a syllable that bears secondary stress as the syllable articulated with the second highest degree of energy. He defines secondary stress as an accentuation that has no pitch prominence. Could you up, please? Okay. Uh, I'm about to conclude. That's 14. Whatever message. We want to convey, that's for you, whatever message. Whatsoever message. We want to convey, however, there are certain rules that indicate which words are possibly going to be stressed in an utterance and which are not. As for the secondary stress placement, the prominence sometimes falls on those places which were dominant earlier, but there is always a balance between the two to establish the rhythm of the sentence. We can do some intonation exercises to get our students find out about the location of the primary and the secondary stress. The teacher asks students to mark several sentences to mark their primary and secondary stress as intonation exercises as he reads them aloud. John loves Mary. John uh, loves Mary and phonetics is easy. Uh, let's do it fast. I'm 18. Were they home? Want to see it? And uh, some other examples. A week ago, where do you live? Come you please. Do you study English? How are you? Five things. Who did that? So, in those areas, the students are expected to put primary and secondary stresses. Would you like some coffee? So, your students mark those with primary and secondary stress signs. Um, okay.
Okay, let's go into the conclusion. Uh, uh, okay, the conclusion. Okay, the conclusion is the next slide further. In many phonological approaches and in many dictionaries, English is represented as having two levels of stress: primary and secondary. Um, in every lexical word and in some grammatical words, one syllable is identified as having primary stress, though in monosyllables the stress is not generally marked. In addition, longer words may have one or more syllables identified as having secondary stress. Syllables that have neither are called unstressed. Secondary stress is frequently indicated in the following cases in words where the primary stress falls on the third syllable or later in many compounds or phrases, uh, those parts are pronounced more prominently. Teaching students uh, the distinction between primary and secondary stress is of utmost importance for their acquisition of the rhythm of English. English being a stress time language, the stressed syllables occur approximately at regular intervals. The correlation of primary and secondary stress carries a special function for conveying the intended meaning. And even unstressed syllables bear their own mission to support them with their absence of stress. Finally, the neglect of such an important item as the secondary stress uh, and its function in sentence rhythm cause many problems in oral communication. So this need, this need is to be overcome or prevented at an earliest stage possible of the English pronunciation teaching so that the students can move further with more confidence in their self-expression and the grasp of the phonetic system of the language that they try to convey their meanings. So, any questions? I think we don't have time for questions. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much for your attention.